Hello everyone. Welcome to Cabbage Patch Soap. My name is Laura and today we are going to be making a little owl soap. It's going to be super cute, I hope. We're also going to be cutting the fox soap that we made last time. And right now I am putting on gloves and I will be making sure that I can see the chat. So I'll be setting that up. Should just take a minute here. And I need to get the soap cutter. Hi, Lorna, welcome. Should just take a second to get everything set up as usual. I left the soap cutter on the shelf, so I need to bring that over. Let me just check. Oops. I'm doing great, Lorna. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay. Almost got these chats set up. Okay. Looks like the chat is going, so I can see that. That's good. Let me get the cutter. I'm going to be talking about this in a minute, too. Uh, these little fairies that we made a while ago, um, but I want to save that off to the side here. Wow, happy birthday! That's awesome! Birthdays are a lot of fun. Sometimes. For some people. Oh, looks like I forgot to clean off the cutter. Guess I'll be doing that first. Whoops. All right. I'm going to set this here backwards because I'm going to clean this off. It looks like last time we cut that soap, it was really, really soft. So I just spent a few minutes cleaning this, I'm getting all the soap out of it. So you guys get to see a little bit of the behind the scenes of doing a quick clean on a soap cutter. I know a lot of people just leave this because, I mean, it's soap. It's not going to hurt anything, but sometimes the colors transfer, and even though that isn't detrimental either, um, it might annoy some people, so I'll go ahead and clean it off. Hi, Ian. Welcome. Lost track of time. That never happens to you. What are you talking about? You are so punctual, punctual and you never have anything important going on. You just sort of wait around for stuff to, to happen all the time. Right? Did I get all that correct or am I a little off? Oops. So I dropped that. All right. The wires I just cleaned, so do the rest here. And now you're probably off doing something and can't answer me. So I should just continue talking and make you sound like a terrible person because you can't defend yourself. This is a good time, I think. To point out all of your flaws. It'll be a short, uh, short segment. There's a lot of soap crumbs in here. Actually, this is, I'm just gonna fold it in half once. Yeah, that's better. I can get way back, way into there much easier. Anyways. Bacon soap crumbs all over the table. You know, it's a good thing it's soap and not something actually messy, like dirty. You could see how this would be a problem if it was dirt or grease or something. All right. All right, there we go. What are you saying? <laughs> On your phone, typing is really slow. Uh-huh, sure, sure. What game are you playing? I'm going to spray this with rubbing alcohol. 
just to, I mean, like I said, it's already clean, but um, I do this instead of water to like wash it in quotation marks. And we just need to get, this is really the only part we're gonna be using, so. There's, wow, there's a lot of soap stuck to that. Yeah, that soap was really soft when we cut it. It's left behind a lot of soap bits. So, like I said, it's not a problem, but it doesn't look pretty on camera. So, you got a lot of soap to cut sometimes. Okay, we'll just give that one more mist real quick. There, everything looks so-so. All right, I'm gonna move this. All right, okay. I think that's about as clean as I'm going to get it for now. Until later. Still thinking of maybe setting aside some dirty soap dishes and things and just having like one video where we do like a behind the scenes. If you guys would be interested in that, I thought it might be fun. Okay. So first things first, I want to talk about these little um, soap fairies we made a while ago. They look kind of like this. There's a whole bunch of them. There are some fairies and butterflies. So I'll get one of the butterflies. See if the camera is going to pick that up. Nope. This one it should though, because I dusted it with gold. So um, Felicia from the Crafting Nook had asked me if it was possible to put these into melt and pour. And the answer is yes, kind of. Uh, melt and pour, you can get it in like a clear form. So basically when the soap, after you make the soap, if you don't add any colorants or anything to it, uh, the soap will be clear when you're done. And sometimes people will put cute things in them like little toys. I used to put erasers in mine. Um, that way when the kids are done washing their hands, they have like an eraser that they can use. It's like a, it's not just a toy, it's like something functional. And I used to sell those at the, you know, um, farmer's markets and things like that. But um, as far as putting like cold process soap in there, I mean, you, you can do, do it definitely. The problem is that the cold process soap has to evaporate and like it has to cure. And if you put it in the, the melt and pour soap, it may not do that. I've never, um, I guess I've technically never actually like tried to do it except for once when I made like a snow globe, but that was different. And um, the the soap wasn't completely encased so it could still breathe. So what I'm thinking is since these have had some time to cure, I'm gonna go around here and I probably should have done this when it was still soft, but um, you know, I thought we would just trim off um, on some of these and see if, see if we can trim it without ruining it. And I don't know because the soap is really firm now because it's had lots of time to cure. And you can see it's like, instead of coming away like a soft clay, it's chipping away. But that gives a little bit better of a butterfly shape. And hopefully I'm doing this in frame. Um, but I wanna try a little bit. We'll see if this breaks, then we'll know that we can't do it. But um, I thought maybe for the next live, if we just have these butterflies and fairies already prepared, I could put them in an individual bar mold and then put the melt and pour over the top. I have a little bit of melt and pour left. I don't use it very much anymore, um, but we can use what I have and make a couple of bars and see how it turns out. Um, so that way I'll have to let Felicia know that I'm doing her suggestion so she can see it. You just died, so thanks. <laughs> well, it's, you only started out with Half-Life. So, it's not my fault. Next time you should play Full Life. Because that's what I would have done. Or maybe get some heal potions. Okay, so... All right, so there's there's butterfly wings. It's been uh, mostly chipped out of the soap there. And yeah, this camera. I got this camera 
to do um, like vlog type videos and it's not meant for doing close-ups at all but it was really cheap and it's a really good camera I mean honestly like the camera like when I when I look at my videos later on to like check them and whatever I can see the video quality is pretty good so it's still a highly recommended camera but it just will not do close-ups and I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong or or if it's just the camera but I always blame the camera all right yeah so so you get kind of an idea of how that looks and then the fairies um they're a little more tricky because they have like really narrow like legs and arms um I don't know if I'll be able to really fully chip these out of the soap uh pour, like the over pour but we can at least take off some of this excess and I won't be doing all of these um in this live I'm just kind of showing you how it's gonna look hopefully get like an idea and then when we go to put them inside the clear melt and pour We'll see how that looks and i'll probably go over some of these and dust them like i did with that purple butterfly maybe dust them in a like a gold or silver or something so that the details will stand out a little bit better because really i think that if we just put this like if i was just to put this in the soap the clear melt and pour i think it would just look like a green blob it would be really hard to tell what it was unless i did something to uh make the details stand out so Maybe we could even use a little bit of glitter. I have some biodegradable glitter we can use and uh, make it look pretty. Like maybe put the glitter in the background or something. I did that for some of the winter soaps because it looks, if you do it right, it'll look like snow or at least you can tell people it looks like snow. All right. Okay, so just checking. Okay, so her hand ends here. There we go. Try not to cut off any limbs. Okay, so you can kind of see what she's supposed to look like, kind of. She's got like a dress on and those are her wings coming out the back and she's like leaning forward. Anyway, so what we'll do is, like I said, I will, um, I will work on these and then we'll make a couple of them into into melt and, melt and pour soap bars. That should be super cute. So I'm going to leave that in here for now. Keep the dust and stuff off of them. Oh, and here's a pink one also. I, that was sitting on the table. And more of the soap shreds. Okay, so I think... Yeah, I think that's done. I'm going to slide this under here and just set this aside. Limbs is bad, huh? Yeah, cutting off limbs. Yep. Yeah, it would be. It would be. She wouldn't look like much of a fairy. She would look like a um, a lightning bug or firefly or whatever you guys call them. Whatever I call them. All right. So I'm going to set this aside also. I don't need that. Okay. So now for cutting of the fox soaps. Um, let me grab. First of all, let's unmold the individual. So here's this. I ended up... Um, after I took it out of the oven, I covered it with this to keep the dust and stuff off of it. And uh, we'll see if this will come out easily. Okay, it looks like it's coming out fine. That's good. Okay. So here you can see the two distinct green colors. There's this more, a little bit, I would say darker, but it's not really darker. It's more of like a blue tone green. And this is a more yellow tone green. And I did add the extra yellow to it to really help the two colors stand out against each other. And this is just some of the edge clean off. This feels really um, sticky because these molds hold in moisture really, really well. You can see here the, well, that's the oval purple here. You can see like the two different shades of green. It's really pretty. And the cute little fox with the swirls and a little bit of that gold shimmer, a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is set this on a piece of little paper that I use. Let me get all this out of the way. Okay. I had a lot of things to show you, so I had a lot of things on the table. And then we'll use that same individual mold uh, set to make 
or a, yeah, to make the individual bar today, whatever we end up with left over. Okay. So this aside. All right. All right, so now for the actual bars. So here's how that turned out. Um, oh, I have the plastic on it still. Ta -da. So we got the cute little foxes, a little bit of that gold dusting, and hopefully the um, the swirls. You can kind of see them, like the texture is what I was looking for. That's word. All right, let me open this up. Okay, I'm trying not to knock anything over back here because I got the soap, the oils and stuff back there. All right. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to set aside the, the wooden form. And I'm just making sure that it doesn't stick when I turn this out. I'm going to try to get an air pocket under there. That's the easiest way to get these out of here. You can sort of see it forming, or I can. Hopefully that shows up on camera. Okay, come on. Okay, looks like it's released. So now I'm just trying to push it out. It feels like it's still a little bit soft, so we'll see what happens. Trying not to damage this any more than I have to. Okay, so first of all, you can really see the different two different greens shows up really, really nice, which is good. Okay. And I'm going to put the foxes on this side of the bars so that when I go to cut this, hopefully, um, I'll be able to see where the wires are cutting and won't cut the foxes in half. So let's give this a try. Uh, Scoot this back a little bit. Okay. Just kind of, whoops. Mm, it's pretty close. We'll see. Let's try it. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Whew. Yeah, that was close. All right. So we'll save the little end pieces later. This soap is still really soft, so that's good. I was, sometimes when I uh, wait an extra day to cut it, like how I'm doing for these videos, I always worry that it'll be too firm, but all right, here's how it looks. Super cute little fox. You got the, basically the darker to lighter green, or the bluer to more yellow green. Eat it. No. You eat it. Okay, so then here's this side. And this dark darker circle in the center, if that's picking up on camera, that's probably from where it gelled. Normally you want the gel to go all the way to the edges. So either for whatever reason, this didn't gel on the edges or as this cures, the color will balance out and you won't have the dark circle in the middle. But if it stays, I kind of like that. It almost looks like you're looking deeper into the forest. So um, I'm okay with that. And then here's the top. So I don't know. I think it's kind of cute. I'm glad that the foxes turned out because I was worried that where I put them, it would uh, cut through. Here's the next one. And I'm really glad that this canopy look turned out because when you pour in the, um, the colors like that, when you alternate them, sometimes you just don't know how they're going to lay. But this one actually turned out all right. So I'm really happy with that. There was another soap I tried to make a long time ago with this layered canopy look and it didn't it didn't come out right. Um, the soap thickened too quickly. And so I ended up with like chunks of color instead of layers like this. Um, it was still really cool looking, but it wasn't the design I was going for. So I'm really glad this one turned out. And then after these cure for a little bit, I will um, plane them to make them smoother and I will bevel the edges. So this is the last bar. And it came out super cute. I'm glad I put the gold on top. I like the little sunshine look to it. It's really cute. 
So those are the foxes. And then these are the end pieces. So this one ended up with almost a full fox in it. And this one just has basically the ears and then the shadow of a fox. Um, since the, the end piece is typically the, um, the embeds don't go all the way to the end. But I do that on purpose because if, if I did put them all the way to the end, I would risk the embeds being too big for the mold. And that's not something I want to find out when I'm getting ready to put everything together. So that's how they look. Thank you, Lauren. I'm glad you like it. We will definitely um, do more little woodland animals, I think, because I bought all the little cutters for them. And I think they're really cute. So hopefully I'll be able to come up with something different for each one. Um, that way they'll kind of stand out from each other. All the foxes are definitely super fun. Hold on, I'm trying to get this bit of green out of here. There we go. A little piece of green soap. I can set that aside. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the shelf and then I'm going to put the soaps up to cure. And then we will start on the owls. Okay, let me just take a look. All right, I got a good spot I could put these. All right, should just take a second here. I'll put the little round one up there and the samples. Okay, we're set with that. Just see what you guys are saying real quick. The gold and fox color complement the greens. Yeah, I was hoping that they would at least show up because I didn't want the um, colors to kind of disappear into each other. You gonna ask about the owls? <laughs> you can't type beans on your phone. You know it would solve it, Ian, is just using text, uh, speech to text, because that that never goes wrong. Text to speech is uh, the way to go. Just kidding. Don't do text to speech. It's terrible. All right. Okay, so here are the oils for the soap. And I'm just checking and they do feel quite cool. So that is good. Um, I set this plastic aside. And also the colors. So I think, was it Stacy who suggested the owls and said her friend liked pink? I think it was Stacy. Um, I went to double check after my video posted and it hadn't posted the chats yet. So, I wasn't able to go back and double check, but I'm going to do that afterwards. Um, I thought for an owl soap, it would be cute to use this fragrance. It's called Moon Dust. This is new. Um, a new fragrance company. This is a, well, it's not new, but new to me. I don't use a whole lot of their stuff. Um, Nature's Garden. Um, but I haven't used it because, like, I don't use it a lot because I just, I just haven't used it. It's not because uh, there's anything wrong. I wanted to actually try out some of their fragrances. Um, and there was a couple that they had that I couldn't find other places that I wanted to try. Let me just check here. So I want to look up the notes on this fragrance because do, 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 um, I wanted to see what the fragrance notes were on this. Okay. They call it an enchanting fragrance with, uh, fruity notes of red berries, tangerine, uh, citrusy bergamots, um, and then also it has effervescent notes of champagne and cyclamen, violet, uh, or actually violet leaves, and um, cashmere, amber, and musk. So it's a very, um, I'd like to say a well-rounded fragrance. It has some um, almost sharp notes, like the berries, like, I don't know, like for me, the berry notes smell really sharp to other people 
might not have that, you know, register it the same way. But there's the berries. I'm just smelling it <laughs> to make sure. And it does have those nice base notes that kind of round it out really well. Yeah, and the tangerine, I get that definitely. So it is like a fruity floral kind of. Um, and uh, anyway, so we're going to use this, but I suspect it might accelerate. I don't know. Um, also, I want to do a uh, what's called like a mica line. I want to use this dark navy blue by Nurture Soap. And uh, the reason is because I want the owls to be basically sitting on something. And for them to be sitting on something, there needs to be like a line of color. Um, and this is also going to be a little bit complicated because that means the the first layer of soap needs to be firm enough to support the owls. And then when I pour the rest of the batter over the top, it needs to not like just break through the bottom. Um, and since this is a new fragrance and all of this is a test, this is probably a really bad idea. I would not recommend doing it this way, but that's what I'm doing anyway. Um, and I liked her, um, I like the suggestion of, wait a second, let me get back to this. See what you guys are saying really quick. Have a great night, Lorna. Thank you for hanging out. Um, but due to the suggestion uh, from before, and also the pink, I've got this pink neon, which I thought would be kind of cool. Um, but then I thought maybe we could do kind of like a sunset type look. So I've also got orange neon and uh, uh, purple neon, which uh, I thought would be a good like range of colors for kind of like a sunset type look. So I'm going to set this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up, I guess first I'm going to dust this off. I'm going to divide up the um, batter once I mix it. I'm going to divide it up into these three different containers. And uh, we're going to put a little bit of each on the bottom and then on the top layer. But I want the pink to be like the more dominant color. All neons are good. Yes. These should be blacklight reactive and everything. Let's hope. I should put my black light out. We can test it. But the ones I made before were, which was a lot of fun, I think, in the soap. I like doing, um, I like making the soaps that are black light reactive or that have um, uh, like glow in the dark powders and stuff in them. But anyway, so I thought that'd be kind of cute for the owl. So that's what we're going to do. So I got these two and then this main. I just put a piece of soap crumb from the soap we cut, dropped it in there. Okay. All right, so everything else is fine. So I'm going to um, divide these up. And like I said, we'll put a little bit of the orange and the purple, but I want the dominant color to be pink. Um, so I'm just going to pour in a little bit. And then I need to use something to dust on that dark navy blue. So I'm going to put a bunch of this in here. I want these neons to be bold, but not uh, not overdo it. So good luck with that. I will probably overdo it. All right. Switch to your desktop, huh? Well, it is probably for the best. I mean, you only had half a life, right, on that game. Or are you still playing? I'm going to wait, obviously, to add the pink to this because we need to put, we need to divide everything up. You can see how bold this orange is, and um, this is really nice purple. I've used these before, so I know that they'll work good. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find something I can use to make the mica line. This is not, this is not a thing I do too often because how much of a pain it can be to get it to look perfect. Um. Usually people use like little tea strainers, which I have, but it's put up. And I don't want to get it down. Let's see. I've got this little spoon. We can use that. I could use a fork. I think we'll just stick to this little spoon and kind of hope for the best. 
The worst thing that can happen is it'll get ruined. It's not the end of the world. Oh, and I have the little owls I can show you. Hi, Stacy. Welcome. Hey, no problem. We were just getting started on the owl soap. And I was saying I wanted to do like a little sunset look with this orange and purple and neon pink. And we're going to be using a fragrance called Moon Dust, which smells really good. So I will set that aside. We're going to pour it. Yeah, I did. I found that uh, that owl cutout thing I was saying I needed to find. So that was good. That was good. I had it. So, all right. So I'm going to set all this aside. Where was I? Right. I was going to pour the um, light water into the oils. Oh, and also I was going to show you the owls. So let's hope. So these are the owls and they're laying down. So I don't want to, I don't want to risk them coming apart when I lift them, but they will look like this. They look like owls kind of sitting on a branch or something. So we're going to do a mica line as like the branch and see if we can get them to sit properly. So we'll find out if it works or not. One second. had to put on my face shield. So the challenge is that the owls are kind of taller than they are wide. So when I make the mica line and I put the owls in, there's a very good chance that they will just kind of fall over or that they'll start to sink down and you'll end up with like this like like this dip where the, the branch comes across. There's like a dip where the owl is sitting like this. So um, there's a couple things we can do about that. I can either try to make sure that the bottom layer is like more firm than the layer I pour on top, or um, when I put the owls in, I can pour, I can hold them in place maybe, and then pour the other batter around it to kind of support them and to kind of add weight. So basically they might be sinking in, but everything is sinking down with them, if that makes sense. So it kind of just equalizes a little bit. I don't know. We will find out. So, um, hmm thinking how I want to want to decorate the top. I was going to put um, owls on top, but I changed my mind. I thought instead I'd rather have something on top of on top instead of the owls. Um, I was going back and forth about glitter, but I think what I'll do is we'll just do like a swirl because then it'll look kind of galaxy-ish, like a neon galaxy. So instead, if all this works out anyway, we'll see. Chopstick. All right, I'm just going to plug in Whoops. Plug in this stick blender. And we're going to try to make the pink the dominant color in this little sunset scheme. So there we go. All right. And I'm going to try not to over mix this since we have kind of a complicated design going. Um, the oils are cooled off. The light water has been cooled. So this shouldn't over accelerate, but this is a new fragrance that I haven't worked with before. So I don't know how it's going to behave. It's supposed to behave well in the soap, but we'll see. Uh, so go ahead and add the fragrance now just to kind of get it incorporated because I don't want to fiddle with it later. Smells really super good. It's very, very like berry and citrus, and then you've got the base notes. So it's like I said, a really well-rounded fragrance. I really like this one. Okay. And I want this just mixed, just enough to where I can pour it off into separate containers. And I think we're already there. So, um, this is not mixed well enough to pour in the mold. This is just mixed so that when I pour it into these different colors, we have the oils and the live water mixed. So a little bit of the orange, a little bit of the purple, and the rest can be pink. Um, I think that's going to be enough. Let me just, okay, yeah. And of course we got some of the colors stuck to the bottom because of how I did it. 
usually to avoid that, you would add the color to the container to the container after you had the batter in there, but that's not how I did it. So I just have to keep mixing. And I'm doing this by hand because, like I said, I don't know if it's going to accelerate or what it's going to do. So. Um. Same thing, try to scrape it all up, get that to mix in. Try to do this on camera, or in frame, I mean. Okay. Well, what we're looking for is for those specks to disappear. But of course, I got uh, the powder all the way up the side of the container. All right. It's getting there. I may have to stick blend this. I'm kind of trying to avoid that because I don't, I don't want to clean the stick blender off in between each one. Um, yeah. Okay, well, that's at least we know that the color is strong enough, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so that was still helpful to do that. And you can see like how this is kind of still separating, so we still need to mix, which is fine by me. So I'll add this pink. Lots and lots of pink. It's kind of cool sitting on top of the soap. It's like day glow. Because it is day glow. All right. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Clunk. Well, I guess it finally did come out. Okay, good. All right. All right, so let's mix this in. You did not want to come out at first. And I'm going to go ahead and just mix this because I already know it's going to be lumpy if I don't. Okay. And then we'll go to this orange. Okay, and then to the purple. But I don't want this all mixing in. Another way to avoid having to mix is by mixing the neons in with some oil before, and then you just pour the oil in, but like I said, I didn't do that. Okay. And I like to take apart my stick blender when I do this so that I don't accidentally, um, you know, it doesn't accidentally turn on and uh, hurt myself or something. Okay. So there's that. Okay. There we go. All right, let's try the purple now. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay. I still need to clean off the rest of the table. And this is probably, a, this is more colorant than I meant to put in, which is another reason why I normally pre-measure. So I need to go back to that, I think. But um, the colors are going to be really, really bold. And some of these will make the suds, like when you're washing with it, it'll probably make those suds, um, uh, like it'll probably color them just because of how bold this is. So, all right. So for the sunset, what I want to do is maybe start with like some purple and orange and then add the pink and then go up from there. Um, so let's start with that. Um, we'll put the purple in and these, these colors are definitely going to mix at first. And then as we add them, um, like I said, as it firms up, when we get to the top and it firms, hopefully it'll be firm enough uh, to support the weight of the owls. Um, so let's do, let's see, how do I want to do this? We're going to cut it this way. Yeah, let's just do it. Well, let's do it this way because I want the, the lines to be kind of like how we did the fox where you can kind of see the lines. So some orange. A little bit of this pink. I might, can you guys see that? I think you can. Pink. 
and we'll let that break through a little bit because we're going to be putting a lot of this pink in. Uh, a little bit more purple. The good news is this does seem to be thickening a little bit, so hopefully by the time we get to where, where we need to float the owls, they'll float. All right, a little bit more orange. A little more than last time. Okay. And then a little bit more pink. A little more purple. Okay. And let's do a little more purple than that because I need to, I don't want to have too much of this left over when we get to the top. Some more orange. Some more pink. Yeah, sunglasses, yeah. We do a little more pink than last time because we're getting closer to the top where the pink would go. All right, so at this point, this is where I want to add the owls. It's a little bit further, a little further up than halfway. Um, and I don't want to add the owls on top of the purple because the owls are, are black, and I think that the black against the purple is not going to stand out very well. Um, so we're going to do, as much as we can, we're going to do pink around the owls, orange, and then maybe the little bit of purple, like maybe one more small amount of purple towards the end. Okay, so I'm just going to... Make sure that's as level as we can get it. Make sure I can see these lines. Because I want to make sure that the owls go in this way. Um, so we'll get this black. Well, it's dark navy blue. It's not really black. It's like a very, very dark blue. And the reason is because typically black I would use um, like an activated charcoal or something. And um, that gives you a very, very black line. Um, but the black iron oxide, like that would be the only other real option, but either one of those, the, the, um, activated charcoal I've done lines with, but it's very, very, very messy. Um, and then the dark, the black iron oxide is so strong that if I was to do a full mica line with it, I feel like it would come out of the soap and it'd be a big mess, but I haven't tried it. So I guess maybe I should try it before I assume that. Okay. So. That's a really thick mica line in some places. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of blow on the mica and kind of help it move around a little bit. It's going to create a big cloud probably. All right, just a second. I need one of those like little um, camera lens cleanser cleaners. And I have one somewhere. I don't know where it is. So uh, I might have to clean off this camera one of them. Okay. Can I get that back in there? Okay. All right. And then I will use this, kind of break up some of these bigger pieces a little bit. It's not going to matter. I don't think it's too thick. Um, the only danger with a thick mica line is that um, if it's thick all the way across, then what can happen is that the um, mica can cause separation between the two layers but since this is just there's a couple of thick spots it's not really bad i think it'll be fine okay that's better all right i'm going to need to find my little um my little tea strainer it's in one of my um containers up on the top shelf so i didn't want to get that down while i was actually filming that was my fault. Okay. Let's see. Is this thing fluid? Okay. Come on. So, eh, I don't think it's firm enough really to support the owls, but we do need to. Let me see. The owls are nice and small, so at least they don't weigh a whole lot. So, here's a closer look at their little shape. It's really cute. I'm going to go ahead and try anyway. Where are my lines? I think they're here. Did I cover them? I did. Okay, well, they're, they were here. So we'll go with that. I 
I'll have to mark something later. Um, okay. So here's the tricky part. This is the part where I was saying um, I'd probably have to use the pink, I mean, use the spatula or something to kind of like pour the, the next color on top and see if we can balance it out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Let me see. Well, it's getting there. It's starting to firm up. All right, let me go ahead and put this in and we'll see what happens. Whoa. Oh, you know what? I think this is, yeah, this is like exactly the same size as the mold. Okay, so maybe we can use this to our advantage. If I can wedge it in there, maybe that can help support them. Okay, there they go. Okay, good, perfect. All right, so now I got this. I just want to float this pink right on top if I can. Okay, so far so good. This side, okay, good. This pink. <laughs> Uh, oh well. All right, so I should make another soap with this neon pink with like less used and show you what it's supposed to really look like. Okay, let's get those sitting back up correctly. Okay, all right, so that's done. And then let me get this purple, the last of this purple and orange. Um, let's see, we're gonna do it this way though. Okay, come on, come on, come on. It's not coming out. There we go. There we go. Okay. And we'll do the same thing with the orange, the rest of the pink, and then we'll do like a swirl thing on top, hopefully. Come on out. There it goes. Okay. Got this nice little drizzly thing going on top. Okay. And then this, uh, this pink. Which I'm going to pour on top and get that to cover as much as possible. All right. All right, so now we're gonna put the other colors on top and then we will do like a little swirl. Other colors, there we go. And I'm going to just swirl these. Okay, so there's that. Oops, got cool, like pink and orange and purple swirl. I'll set this down. Um, I'm going to scrape off the sides a little bit because it's a lot of overpour. <clears throat> and then, then we'll put the leftover batter into one of the individual molds. And I'll just do this so I remember which way I did that. All right, so that's going to set aside. Let me pour all of this, I think, into, we'll do like one container. And then that way we could do like a, like a dirty pour or whatever into the, into the mold. So what I'm doing here is I'm just scraping this up so that it's not completely stuck to the sides. And then we'll do the same thing with this orange. I mean, this pink. And I will pour it all into here. That's a little bit out of frame there. There you go. And then we're going to pour everything into the into the mold. Okay, there's that. Then. There is this orange. There's a lot more in here than I thought. 
That's good. That way we can have all three colors clearly represented in the in the bar. Okay. I'm going to put it in here. <clears throat> I'm just going to go around the edges here and just kind of loosen it up so it'll pour out easily. There we go. That's kind of neat looking. Have almost like a tie-dye look to it. You guys can see. I'm going to pour the rest in here. There we go. Whoops. Making a huge mess. What else is new? All right. Okay, there we go. There's that. And now, I'm going to see if I can find a little bit... Well, I was going to see if I could find an individual color, but I don't think there's really any... Oh wait, there's some orange in here. What we'll do is kind of put that on in a couple spaces. There we go. All right, we'll take this and just kind of gently swirl it. <clears throat> and a little more of the orange. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, there we go. So there you go. That one's got a little bit of a swirl on top too. Yeah, I'm glad they look okay together. It's hard with neons because you never know. I mean, especially when I dump in way too much. That <laughs> That's brilliant. But uh, it looks good, but it didn't look how I was planning on it looking. But that's just how it goes sometimes. I just have to be more careful. So what I'm hoping for is when we cut this, that that mica line will look like like the uh, the owls wouldn't have sunk down too far, and that the mica line doesn't separate the two layers of soap. I don't think it will because it's just not enough thick layers in there for it to do that. I don't think. Um, and also that I don't know that it looks good in the end because, like I said, I did put in way too much paint. Um, so more than likely when you use the soap, the suds will be colored. So just be aware of that. Um, it's not like harmful or anything, but it's also not what most people expect. So just sort of a heads up there. Okay, I think I got all the sp spillage. Okay, so, oh, and I think you were, you were gone, Stacey. Oh, let me see what you're saying real quick. Oh, the fox soap. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, let me let me get this roughly cleaned up here. Um, the um, I think you were gone when I announced this. Also, the little fairy soaps that we made last time, I saved some of those little fairy and butterfly tiles because I don't know if you remember, but Felicia asked if it was possible to put the. Um, I'm gonna take these gloves off because they are really stained. I don't want to see any other soap. Um, she asked if we could put the little, like, fairies... Oh, hey, hold on. Sorry, I had to take the headset off. If we could put the fairies inside Melton Pour. So, and I remember I told her, like, yes, kind of. Um, but that it's better to let the soap cure first because the soap has to, like, cure and shrink. And, um... You know, if you put it in Milton Pool right away, that won't happen. And also, the other problem you run into is the color transfer. So, like, the mica or the colorants or dyes or whatever you use, depending on what makes up the color of the soap that you're using, um, it can seep out into the clear Milton Pool and it can make it cloudy. So, what I did was I went ahead and saved some of those tiles. And let me show you. Um... If you go back and watch the beginning, you'll see what I was doing. But basically, I, I took some of these and um, 
had a little palette knife here and I was just basically chipping away the excess excess soap, like the overpour that was in on the edges and cleaning it up so it's like more of a butterfly shape. Um, I did the same thing for this fairy, even though she's, she's upside down. Um, but basically, even though you can't really tell she's a fairy, I think what I'll do is maybe dust her, like how I did dusting with gold on this, I might dust her with another color so that the details come out a little bit better. Um, but I thought we could try, I have a little bit of melt and pour left. Um, I don't use it nearly as much as I used to, so I don't keep a whole lot on hand, but I was thinking maybe we could melt some and try Felicia's idea of putting the fairies in the melt and pour and see what happens. Um, so that should be, um, maybe I could do that on the next live. Yeah, the gold highlight really, really helps you see the detail because otherwise it just looks like a blob of color, especially when you put it in the inside the melt and pour. A lot of times, um, if you have something that's just one color, like those tiles, um, they kind of lose their shape. They lose the definition, rather. So you just see like a, a vague, like colored object in there and it's not clear what it is. So let me get a glove on real quick so I can show you the soap. But yeah, so... I'm probably going to be dusting them. Uh, I'm going to try to finish trimming them. Because the soap has had time to cure, it's it's kind of like harder and more brittle than it was when I first took them out of the mold. They are more pliable and soft. And so the soap is, it's more chipping away and less like trimming away, if that makes sense. So um, I'm trying to think of a consistency to compare it to maybe like a crayon um, like that. Like if you try to cut one, how it just kind of breaks off instead of it just cutting smoothly through like it would if the soap was fresh. So my concern is that like as I chip away at these, I might accidentally break them or something. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to do as many as I can and then then we'll see how, how it looks in the melt and pour. Okay, so a little fox soap. So here's how they turned out. We got the two different shades of green and they layered nicely. I wanted like a canopy look. And I think I finally achieved that with the layers. Um, I was saying before that there was another time I made a soap that was supposed to have like canopy layers and the soap firmed up too much. So I ended up with like blobs of color instead of lines of color like this. So this looks much, much better. So I think it came out okay. It's really cute. And then the top looks like this. You've got the little fox and then the gold, like the sunlight on the tops of the trees. So it came out super cute. And I don't know if the, the camera is picking this up. There's like a great big dark circle in the middle. And that's either from it going through gel and then either the outside edges didn't gel or that's something that will fade as the soap cures. I don't know, but I kind of like it there. It almost gives like a sense of depth, like a like the like you can see deeper into the forest, even though that's not really what's going on. But they came out kind of cute. So that's those. And those need to sit here and, and cure for a little while. And then these other soaps I need to put in the um, oven so that they can go through gel. Yeah, they are really cute. And I like that the orange, the orange seems to show up really nice against the green, which was something else I was concerned about because I didn't want them to just dis disappear. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean this up and put these soaps in the oven. And then in the next live, we will unmold these and we will, um, what was I saying? Oh, the fairies. We'll make the little fairies. If this soap doesn't turn out for some reason, we can also remake it. I have enough of everything to just make it again. Um, that's a possibility as well. So. And then if you guys have any suggestions as usual, go ahead and leave them in the comments or um, you know, leave a comment below the video or whatever. So that way I will have some ideas of what to make for you guys um, in the future videos. So this was a lot of fun, even though I dumped in a ton of pink. Uh, so the owl is supposed to perch on the branch. Yeah, that that layer I put in of that dark color, that mica line, when, you, when I cut the soap, if everything went perfectly, when I cut the soap, it should have like a dark line with like the owl sitting on top of it, like a branch is what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever done a Michael line quite like that before. Yeah, it's going to be a mostly straight line. So 
maybe it's more like a telephone wire, but, um, but yeah, I didn't have all the stuff I needed to make like an actual branch, although I could, I could maybe do, do one another time and use like soap dough or something and make the branch go all the way across. So that would also be an option for the future. Um, if people like this design style, I can, you know, fiddle with it and do different things, but, but yeah. Also, if you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing because it does really help me out. And um, please leave any comments down below of anything you'd like to see because I would be happy to make it. And thank you so much for spending some time here with me. And um, I will see you guys in a few days on Monday. We will be making the soap that Felicia suggested, which is the fairies inside the melt and pour. So I will see you guys soon. Have a great night.